Okay, so this is a quick tutorial on merging a few scenes in Revit to develop context, right? So we've got this larger context map here of downtown Chicago. In particular, we're looking at this site right here. And, you know, when you're working in Revit, Revit can do this kind of thing at the city scale, but it really excels much more at the building scale. Right, so when you have a big file like this, we can certainly start to put a couple of things together, but it can be really tricky to work with because Revit is thinking about how walls join together. It is thinking about reference planes and connections and all of these really intricate things that work at the building scale that don't necessarily work at the city scale. So geometry doesn't behave like it behaves when you're working in a program like 3ds max or something like that it behaves like a building information modeling tool so be aware of that so there's some limited things that we can do with geometry in terms of trying to get those pieces to come together now notice on this file when you get to something this large in revit if you'll notice i do have shadows turned off um, on and this is a pretty hefty laptop that i'm running here things do slow down quite a bit. So I'm definitely running my shadows off. I am running with hidden lines um, and uh, visual detail set to minimum, simply so I can pan and navigate pretty quickly. So to bring something in, and especially if it's a fairly complicated model, so I'm going to, going to use the example project from Revit. Um, and what I'm going to do with this is the first thing, I've grouped everything together just to make it a little bit easier to transfer in. And so to do that, let's just ungroup everything really quickly. So to group things together, um, and this just makes it a little bit easier to move, um, a little bit easier to copy paste. I'm simply lassoing everybody, and I'm going to hit the create assembly or actually create group. And it should ask me for a group name. And notice I'm already getting some things, right? I'm already getting some warnings. Um, I'm Revit really saying, I'm not sure you want to group things together like this. And that should be your sign that we're pushing Revit in a direction it doesn't like to go, right? But we can still get some basic work done here. So I'm going to say yes, group two, totally fine with the generic name. So now these are two different Revit files. This and this, those are two completely different Revit files. When I'm ready to start merging some elements together, there are some complicated ways to do that, and there are some easy ways to do that. Let's focus on the easy way to sort of permanently put two Revit files together. That is going to be simply to select everything in my scene, and I'm going to use the copy-paste method. So this is simply copying to clipboard, okay? Um, it's not copy here. This is moving things around your current scene. This allows me to move something out of a Revit scene and into a new Revit scene. So I'm going to go copy clipboard. Then I'm going to go to my 3D file. And from here, I'm going to go paste from clipboard. Um, these are my duplicates. And, and again, remember that we're talking about BIM here. So it really isn't happy with the fact that I've got some duplicate objects or some duplicate names and materials, things like that. So I'm sort of continuing to further break Revit a bit, which is kind of scary. But this is, in, in general, this is still going to work. And so from here, I can place my object. And again, best to do something like this sort of in a 3D view. Um, again, five warnings. I'm not going to take time to go through all of them. But, you know, we're dealing with separation lines. We're dealing with highlighted walls that overlap, all kinds of things that happen just from the copy paste process. Okay, so I'm just going to say, okay, none of those are things that are going to destroy my file. But I now have this copied and pasted in place. And on the site, it's kind of embedded itself down into the site a little bit. I can do some basic manipulations to things, right? Like I could come in and let's try and move this around a little bit. So if I move it over, probably going to get an error. Yeah, Revit has experienced an unexpected error. Yeah, this is ready to crash the program right here. So it's going to let us cancel out before it crashes, which is kind of convenient. I can try and drag. So this is a left click and drag. 
yeah, really kind of nothing. So I can take this, let's do um, ungroup. And notice you're gonna see the same thing if we try and rotate. So now that I've got it broken apart, I can definitely start to move individual elements around, um, sort of one at a time. But Revit is just gonna tell you for the most part, and it depends on how things are built for sure, that now once something's in, you need to treat it like a building, right? And a building you don't move around. This goes back to talking about in Revit, you move the site to our buildings, not the other way around. So again, process is totally doable. I can merge these two things together, but really that's not what Revit is about. The best program for merging things together are going to be your programs for representation, like Twinmotion or Lumion or Enscape, right? So let's look at the exact same process here in Enscape, and we'll see that we have much more freedom to move these things around because all the BIM data, other than sort of the superficial BIM data, gets stripped away, and it's, it becomes only geometry. So the first thing that I would need to do is export both of these files um, as FBX, and so I've already done that, uh, and that process is super simple. Again, I need to be in a 3D view. I'm going File, Export, and FBX, okay? Both of these are fairly large files, so they took just a little bit of time to do. So I've already done that to speed up the process. So let's look at this end twin motion. So I'm going to go again top down in terms of how twin motion looks. Import, open, let's grab the site map and say OK. So it's going to take just a minute to read that file. And now it's in place. Um, so I'm going to select it and hit F. And you can see how big this map is. Okay, well, again, we're working at the Chicago scale. It's so big that that's the default city ring right here. It's actually larger than that. So I'm going to grab that moving widget and let's sort of move it so it's the center of that ring. And then we need to go down to our speed and we need to at least be on driving speed. Right? In fact, let's go ahead and set that to airplane speed. It's new for you that haven't been working in Revit for a while or in twin motion for a while. We now have airplane speed, which is super cool. So now that I'm actually inside of this, let's drop that back down to car speed and we can sort of navigate to our site pretty easily. Now the next thing you'll notice is it's actually a little bit too low, maybe. Um, might actually be easiest rather than worrying about moving the entire thing up and down. Let's just delete the ground plane. So that ground plane is gone. This Revit model already has a pretty good ground plane. And from here, I'm going to save you walking through all of the texturing of this. But let's just do two really, really fast buildings and the river. We've got you working on the river. Super, super important. So let's just uh, go to our materials, down to water. We are on a river, so we can just drag and drop that right to the river. And let's zoom in. Um, if you notice, the water is kind of going left to right um, at this particular location, which looks wrong. So let's just take our waves and let's change that flow direction until we get it moving a little bit more down the river here, or downstream, yeah. Now the waves are moving a little bit more in this axis. Super happy about that, much, much better. Okay, next let's look at the buildings. Um, easy way to start thinking about buildings is actually going to be um, just working with um, wall coverings. Um, these sort of plaster wall covering, this, this uh, plaster is a really great default sort of matte material to work with. Um, so I'm just going to take that and drag it onto the buildings. And then let's change that color just a little bit. I just kind of want to warm it up just a, just a pinch. Just something a little bit more like that. And that makes sort of for this really nice sort of background building. And, you know, we just continue to work through that. Okay, to start building up that context. Next, I want to bring in that other FBX file. So that example project, this little building right here, again, I can manipulate it in a much easier way in a program like Twinmotion by coming back to my import, import, open, Example project, open, and okie dokie. 
always set. The default is going to be use, use scene materials. When I'm bringing things in from Revit, I want to check that down to keep both. That's going to allow me to have some duplicate materials um, and give them individual identities. So as I'm merging multiple Revit files together, that's a super important thing to do. Now remember, it's going to bring that in whatever is at zero, zero, zero. And when I'm working at the city scale, it can be kind of like, where did it go? So right here, that's my file, it's my example project. I can click F and that will zoom me to my example project. And now it's just a matter of knowing where I need to move it to. So I can drag that widget right over to here. Again, much easier to move that building around, to rotate it, bring that to the edge of the dock, something like that. Let's zoom in on it, right? Or not to the edge of the dock, but sort of create this sort of dock-like thing with it. And I can work in a much, much, much quicker way in terms of manipulating um, an object on a site. Then in terms of building context and building imagery, all of you should know how to do that. Um, if I want to start creating plans, plan views, um, you know, I can either simply zoom out, I can come in and set my view angle to a plan view like this. Right, so there's all different things that I can start to do to, to shape that up and begin building different imagery, um, begin building different visual qualities in terms of getting that put together. And don't forget also in different rendering styles, all different ways that you can start to look at that and to build that output. But as you're merging files, especially if you're merging them primarily for visuals and design studies, Something like Twin Motion or Lumion are definitely.